Do you know how to go down? It's cutting out. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah, I hear you. There we go. No, I fixed it. I fixed it. Okay. Go ahead and ask me the question. Yeah, I appreciate you guys in the chat for being here, but whenever someone comes up, I don't really read the chats. I have a discussion. I'd rather focus on someone that wants to talk. So, uh, do you believe the Bible? King James, yes. Okay. You would consider that it's all inspired, and you would consider yourself a Christian. You're not an atheist or skeptic or nothing like that, right? Correct. Okay. I just wanted to establish that mainly. <clears throat> Yeah, so we can talk about the first one. Okay. Water baptism is required to be saved. It, did God want us to get baptized? Yes. Is it required? No. Right. To well, be you, saved, you must... Con yeah, go ahead. To be saved, you must uh, ask, repent and ask the Lord to come save you. Okay. Okay, I want to ask you some things. Do you see these little bitty things right here? Yes. Okay, one of them says you got to have a Bible. Do you have a Bible with you? I do. Okay. So you said to be saved, one must repent. What Bible verse would you use for that? I mean, John 3, 16 says itself, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I to... Can I read Can I read you what you're, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever repenteth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. My point is, it doesn't say repent. It says believeth. So I asked for a Bible verse where repentance, like you said, Unless you're going back on what you believe, you said a person must repent. And what'd you say? When you first started, you said the person has to repent and what? Believe it. So you have to repent and ask the Lord to come and save you. Okay. That's yeah, that's it. Okay, so you have to repent and ask the Lord to come and save you. Do you believe like the uh um do you believe that you have authority to tell people things that are not in the Bible? If, if this one says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth in the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Okay. So we, we you, you showed a Bible verse where it says that we gotta believe, right? Yeah. Okay. And you showed a Bible verse that says that we gotta confess. Um Romans ten nine and ten. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay. Yeah. So do, do you do you take see I believe those verses? But I also can show you Bible verses where it says baptism washes away sins, where baptism is for the forgiveness of sins, where uh, when we die through baptism, we're justified, we're freed from sin. So, so the point is, do you want to take just some of God's word or do you want to take all of it? Acts 3.19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Okay, so... Do you see number three up there? Repentance and confession, confessing is required. Yeah. So it's good we, that we establish some common agreements, but you're basically trying to prove something that I already agree with, right? Yeah. I was just trying to actually find the correct verse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could have gave you Acts 17, 13, 31, Acts 3, 19, Luke 13, 3 uh, tells us to repent. Actually, Acts 2, 38 tells us to repent as well. So I believe in repentance uh, and confessing. But can I show you some Bible verses? Do you know the Bible verses that I would show you to show that baptism is required? Not on the top of my head, no. Okay, you, you have your Bible and you're in Acts chapter 3. Turn over to Acts chapter 2 for me. Okay, E. 
Look at verse 37. Now these individuals were preached the gospel, which you would say that you believe that Jesus is Lord and Christ, right? Yes. Yeah. Look at verse 37. You want to read that for, for me? Uh, Acts 2, 37. Yes, sir. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto uh, Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Okay, so let's stop right there. So like, these people heard the gospel and they heard about what Jesus did. A wonderful message, isn't it? About what he did for us on the cross. And these individuals said, what do we do? Now they're not wanting to like go to Walmart or pay their taxes. They're wanting salvation. Okay, they had been, they have been um, preached the gospel to. And, and in that message, they were... Uh, accused and they did about killing Jesus and they want to know what to do. How do they get out of this mess? So look at verse 38. Can you read it out loud? Yeah, you would, if you would, if you don't mind. Man, I don't mind. I'm just making sure. Yeah. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, and so Peter is uh speaking and peter's an apostle you would agree with me right yes okay and the very first part of acts chapter 2 you have the baptism of the spirit coming upon the apostles so really it's not just peter's opinion it's actually inspiration from the spirit would you agree yes okay and he says the first thing he tells them to do he says repent we agree with that right yes and you see the and be that and is a conjunction like if you were driving if me if you had uh, two things the and joins them together right yeah okay and the the second part is be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ and there's a for a certain reason it says for the remission of sins you see that in your king james yes okay remission of sins what does that mean do you think that means forgiveness? Yes. Okay. And so, see, we have another Bible verse that we agree already on repentance, confessing, and believing, but we have another Bible verse where it includes baptism as having the forgiveness of sins. And when we're forgiven, that, that means we're saved. You see how I would tie that in? I can see how you would tie it in, but there, I forget what verse... I can quote scripture, giving book and chapter is the hard part for me. Uh, when it says, uh, one that says, confess with thy mouth, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, confess with thy mouth. I'm brain dead right now. Um, we already read that. That's Romans 10, 9 and 10. It does not like, so you're, so what you're saying is I can't be saved unless I'm baptized. Well, I'm just telling you that when I read that, that Peter says that repentance and baptism is to have your sins forgiven. And so we have to be forgiven. And so I can only, I, I can only tell you what the Bible is saying. I'm not God. You're not God. I'm not Peter. You're not Peter. You can either read it and uh, go with what it says, or you can follow what somebody has told you through your life and believe them. Do me, you let me, let me show go you. ahead. Let me show you nothing. So you got Romans 10, 9 and 10. Let's go back there. Okay. Now it says, If thou shalt confess with the mouth Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But look at verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So let me ask you this. If if you and I are driving in a car and we're going unto Walmart, are we at Walmart? No. Okay. So that we see that when you look at the conversion account, sir, in the book of Acts, people, they did believe and they did confess. And then they were baptized. And when we read in Acts chapter 2, they were baptized for the remission of sin. So... So just real quick, I'll, I agree with Romans 10, 9, and 10, but let's turn over two more pages or three more pages. Look at Romans chapter 6. Will, will you look at Romans chapter 6? I'm there. Okay. Look at verse 7. Would you read verse 7 just to make sure uh, everyone can hear what the Bible says? 
Romans 6, verse 7. Yes, sir. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Do you believe that we got to be free from our sin? Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> do you do you have any kind of tools like where you can look up definitions of words? Like a strong concordance? I, I mean, you don't have to right now. I'm just asking. This is after we get off this little talk that I encourage you, I want to challenge you to go look at these words. Okay? I, I, ha I have a couple things that could possibly be used. Okay. Well, that word freed, do you see that freed in the King James? Verse 7. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. That is the same word that we say justified. Now, when someone is justified, that means they're declared Innocent or just um, um, just if I've never sinned or basically it means saved. Would you agree? This freed? Yeah, that, that exact word freed is in other places the same Greek word that's translated justified. For, for just for example, I want to show you. So do you see Romans chapter 5 verse 1? Yes. Do you see it says, therefore, being justified? By faith, yes. Yeah. So that word justified is the same word freed in verse uh, 7 of chapter 6. It is. So, I, so I, would, I, would, I would challenge you, you know, to double check me. I'm saying don't just, whatever I say on here, don't just believe it. You know, I don't think you would anyways because you've already come on. In agreement, but maybe we can establish some kind of, uh, you know, uh, agreement on things. I mean, you come on disagreement. I think I said agreement, but you come on disagreeing, which is fine. That's what we're here to talk. So, so now look at chapter six, verse seven. I want to establish something. You still there, sir? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, I did. It says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. One of the most important things that we can figure out is how the he is dead. How did the he die, basically? So if you look at verses 3 and 4, you want to read that for me? Uh, 6, 3 and 4. Yes, sir. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Okay. So look at the verse 4 again. I'm going to read it, and you just follow along. It says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That is how we die with Christ. It is in baptism. And then when you go down and look at verse 7, it says, For he that is dead, how did he die? Verse 4, by baptism, he is freed from sin. And so that shows us that is how God removes the sins. It is when we simply just submit to water baptism. So every time we sin, we should be baptized? No, see, that's a good question. Okay, that's a really good question. Now, these individuals... <clears throat> These individuals had been baptized. When we read uh, in, in Romans chapter 6, he says, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized. So these individuals were already individuals that were baptized. So look over at Acts chapter 8. I want to show you this. Acts chapter 8, because you brought up a really good question, and I want to give you a Bible example on what, what to do after you're baptized to be freed from sin. Look at Acts chapter 8. Are you there? Yes. Look at verse. Uh, look at verse twenty. Uh, eight twenty. Okay. Okay. In verse twenty, it says, "But Peter said unto them, unto him." I'm sorry. It says, "And Peter said unto him." So who's it talking to? Well, it's a lowercase in my Bible. Yeah. So, but if you go on up to verse eighteen, it tells you the individual. Simon. Yeah. So Peter said unto him, Simon. Now Simon 
In verse 13, you'll see Simon believed and was baptized. And so when we read what was Simon baptized for, he was baptized, Acts 2.38, for the remission of sins. Romans 6 tells us it freed him from sin. And you asked a good question. Well, do I have to get baptized again when I sin? So he's talking to Simon, and he says in verse 20, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. So if you're not familiar with this, Simon wanted to buy the miraculous gifts given by the apostles, and Peter rebukes him. And in verse 21 it says, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. And look at verse 22. What are you telling me to do? Uh, repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God uh, if perhaps the ugh, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So there were two things that Peter the apostle told a person that was baptized for the remission of sins. He told him to do two things. What do, what do you see there? What do, what's the two things? I've lost the verse. Hang on. Hunt twenty two. Yes, sir. Uh, repent and pray and pray. Yep, repent and pray. And that goes right along with 1 John chapter 1, verses 7, about walking in the light as he is in the light, that we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sins. But then it says then we, when we do sin, we confess our sins and pray, and he forgives us, forgives us of our sins. So we see a connection of 1 John chapter 1, 7 through 9, and then Acts chapter 8, 22, uh, shows us the same thing. See how it connects? And so you don't have to get baptized again, but you have to be baptized the right for the right reason to begin with, okay? Like you can't believe that you're saved already and then get baptized because you have an understanding that baptism is not when God justifies us or forgives us. So you're saying to in order to be saved, you must be baptized. What, what did do? Let me ask you this. Yes or no? What do, do you think the Bible, what we read, does it make sense that the Bible teaches that? I understand where you're coming from. I okay. see it differently. Okay. So since you said you see where I'm coming from, then yes, you have to you have to be baptized because that's when you're forgiven and that's when we're justified. Yeah. So yeah. Let, let let's use this scenario because it has happened. Okay. There was this line of Christians lined up, ready to be uh, unalive. And uh, wait, 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 wait. if there if there was a line of Christians that were getting ready to be unalive, because I I can't say the other word. You're talking about they're going to be, you know what, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, if there were a line of Christians that was going, I'm, get, if, I'm getting to a point. Okay, but I would say they're not Christians. There's not a line of Christians that are going to be unalive before they can get baptized because they're not Christians. No, uh, no. Let's. I'm getting to a point. Line of Christians. Okay. They they've all been uh, saved, baptized. The one on the end, not saved, never know Christ or anything. He sees them all uh, uh, unalive for their faith. He then decides to accept the Lord as his savior. And then he gets uh, unalived himself. Is he not saved? I I would say no. But let me ask you this. So let me let me ask you this. What about if they're about to unalive all of them, and there's one on the end, and he's wanting to be saved, and before the other ones could tell him about Jesus, they're all unalive. Is he saved or is he lost? Oh uh, yeah yeah. yeah. That depends. It that would one honestly depends, because if he is legitimately asking or ugh. no, that, no, they're getting ready to tell him about Jesus, and then they, that's it, they're unalive. So you're going to say he's lost, right? It's okay. I mean, if you it, unless you think everybody's going to go to heaven, I mean, do you think? No, I don't think heaven? that, because it would honestly depend on the scenario. If he's about to ask. As soon as you make that knowledge uh, in your mind that you're about going to ask, hey, Lord, come to my heart and save me, you're saved. Especially if it's going to be in that instance. The thief, the thief on the cross, good point. The thief on the cross, 
Jesus said, "Today thou shalt be with me in paradise." He was not. Uh, he was not baptized. I can I ask you some questions. Yeah. Okay. okay. You you have your King James Bible. Yes. So you said he was not baptized. Okay. Does the Bible say he was not baptized? Common sense would say he's not baptized. He's on the cross. So common sense tells me was he born and raised on the cross his entire life, or was he did he do other things before he got on the cross? He did other things before he was on the cross. Okay, so if you have you have you read the gospel accounts? I'm sure you have, right? Yes. Okay. Do you know how many people were going out to John's baptism? I forget the ex number, but I know it was a lot. I don't think it gives like an exact number, but it gives gives wording like uh, many or all of them came out or a lot of Jews. It gives that 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 point. But here's another thing I want you to think about. So, so the thief on the cross. Okay, so I I don't know if he was or wasn't. I'm not saying he was baptized. I'm not saying he wasn't. Okay, I just say the Bible is silent on it, and I don't know. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to make a statement of a fact that I can't even prove, right? Okay. Okay, but here's the point. Now you went to Romans ten nine and ten. Okay. And uh, how's it? How's it go again? I already closed my Bible. How does Romans ten nine says if you believe in your heart? That I got it. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. That says nothing about baptism. Okay. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, uh, confession is made unto salvation. So it doesn't say anything about repentance, and you already said we got to repent. So say, saying that, like when you read a Bible verse and you say John 3, 16, that don't say nothing about repentance. You know, you we already went to other Bible verses. So the argument that said when you read a Bible verse and you say it doesn't say nothing about baptism, that's not really a good argument because we already established that we went to other places. Okay, so but my point is here's my point. It said that uh, we got to believe that Jesus raised from the dead, right? Yes. So are are you going to tell everyone in the comments that when Jesus saved the thief, that Jesus uh, was still alive? And he told him he was going to be with paradise, and Jesus had not died. So, did the thief on the cross believe in the resurrection before the resurrection even even happened? That's where the timelines of the Bible come in, and when they were wrote. No, it it the it's it's recorded for us the actual timeline of what happened. So, Jesus saved the thief before he raised from the dead. So. Do you think that the thief believed your Romans 10, 9, and 10 before he even raised from the dead? You wouldn't, would you? Because his own apostles didn't. Mm, you're correct. Okay, so my point is, the thief on the cross, you don't go out and tell people to be saved like the thief on the cross because he had not even raised from the dead. And so you tell people that they got to believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So the thief on the cross actually contradicts your own position just because you want to disprove baptism, but it really doesn't even help help you because it disproves your own doctrine of what you would tell people. But it still disproves yours. No, it doesn't pr disprove mine because I believe in Mark 2.10 that when Jesus walked around on earth, he could forgive sin, and then Hebrews 9.16 and 17 tells us about the death of the testator, and I teach that we're after the cross. That's why usually I go to like the book of Acts is because this is after the death, the burial, and the resurrection. The thief would not have mocked God or Jesus if he had been saved and baptized. So that right there, it proves it. It proves what? That he was not saved nor baptized what until he was at till he talked with God and on the cross so are you saying like when someone is baptized they can't be a thief I'm saying he would not have mocked God on the cross if he was saved I don't think he would he wasn't the one mocking God he was the they one both that... mocked and then he looked over later uh, and said and told his uh, fellow thief 
why mock us him? Because he, uh, unlike us, but I'm paraphrasing, unlike us, he doesn't deserve to be here. What 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 book chapter verse you've got to show me this? I'm just curious. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just I want to investigate this. What you said. Let me look it up. It's in Luke 23 is the account. I'm I'm searching the scriptures, and I'm trying to see that. You know, I'm trying to remember. I've read it a bunch. I don't remember that both of them were doing that, but I could be wrong. I'm not perfect. Did I lose you, sir? I'm still here. Sometimes it's quicker to look it up in Google. Well, hey, I hate to do this. It's a really good discussion, and I, I'm at lunch, and I got to go back to work. I'll give you a follow yeah. work and see when you go back live. Yeah, and if I don't go back to work, you're going to have to send me some money to, to take care of me. <laughs> I'm broke myself. <laughs> That's why I got to go. Stuff, food's high, gas is high. All right. Okay. Have a good day. Good talk to you. You have a good day, sir. Well, see, I'm going to, and someone else has come on uh, in the gas. I do got to leave. Uh, so you just, I'm sorry. I, I hate that because I would love to talk to you, but I got to go. And that that's a really nice gentleman. You can follow me. You catch me live. You come on and talk. Uh, we clearly show from the Bible how we can piece that together. And the thief on the cross uh, didn't believe in the death, the burial, the resurrection. We're on this side of the cross and Peter preached that beautiful sermon about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus as Lord and Christ, and simply just repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, for the forgiveness of sins. If you want to study more about this, you can go to my YouTube channel, Truth With Proof, on YouTube. My contact information is on my live streams. You'll see my uh, YouTube information. If you live local area in the Middle Tennessee area, I'd love to reach out to you, come and visit with you, and study the Word of God with you. All right, you guys have a good day.